Hey, it's Rick. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be making a base and doing some lights and accessories on this Halcyon plastic power loader model from the early 1990s. So I started by modeling the base in 3D um, using ZBrush here. I made the base with some standoffs on the inside because that top grill is going to be pretty thin and pretty light and I was worried that the weight of the power loader might cause it to push down or deform on the inside. Now you'll see here I've got some wires and stuff inside. I'm going to add all that stuff after and paint it all black just to make it look um, like there's stuff in there under the floor, like there's electronics and cabling and other stuff running through it. Now I've left enough room under the grill uh, to put in an Arduino Nano and some wiring and some LEDs and some other stuff. The first step is painting all the bare plastic, which I've done already. So I sprayed it with a uh, automotive primer and now I'm going to use some body filler to just smooth out the layer lines. I printed this at 0.2, which is sort of a draft quality. I wasn't really sure if I was going to use it, um, but in the end I've decided it, it looks pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to smooth it all, sand it, and then paint it. This is a two-part Bondo as opposed to the air drying stuff that you can buy for filling pinholes and other stuff. So you should wear gloves with this and uh, be careful. Don't get it on your hands or touch your eye or anything else. It is pretty toxic. Once I've got the coat of Bondo on, I move on to sanding. I'm not going to bore you by showing you that, but uh, what I am going to do here after I've uh, primed the grill and painted it black, now I'm going to go in and dry brush some silver enamel paint onto it just to pick up the highlights and make it look a little worn and used. You can spend as much time on this as you want. I didn't really do a great job. I'm kind of just plowing through it because I just wanted to get this done. I made this little separate door here um, so that it can be easily removed. Not necessarily just to access the electronics because really once they're in place and everything's glued in, you can't get to them anyway. But it's more or less uh, something I'm gonna uh, glue on to the side to make it look like that panel has been opened like the movie. I'm using the same dry brush technique on the rest of the bases I did on the grill. A uh, little bit less silver though, and just generally smudging some stuff on, making it look as used and worn as possible. To match the uh, actual power loader itself, when I painted that, which, geez, I'm gonna say I painted that back in the early 90s, uh, that's what I did, was I textured it to make it greasy and dirty, and I want this to match. I'm doing the light on the top with what is called an, a light chaser or an LED chaser. That's where every light lights in a sequence and then turns off and moves on to the next one. And this can give the appearance of movement. The LEDs that I'm using for this are surface mount. This little top light, the emergency light on the top of the power loader is so tiny, nothing else will fit in there except these things. So they have to be soldered under a microscope. Uh, this is a, an American optical, what they call a stereo microscope. So it's not the typical kind you think of where the light comes from behind and you put stuff on slides and see through it. This is the small part that I made. This is gonna be the base for the top emergency light that spins. Um, this is just something I modeled and then 3D printed. Here's the final part. As you can see, it's pretty small. It's got these little holes in it because the LEDs are gonna go up through that. And then I'm gonna drill some holes in the loader and fish the wiring down through. Now for this, I'm using what they call wire wrap wire. It's um, back in the 60s, the 70s, they used to make prototypes and stuff with wire wrap rather than PCB layouts. I guess it was cheaper, easier, or maybe the technology didn't exist to do it a different way. But uh, the wire is pretty small and works well for this. Now you can see how tiny that LED is there. 
Uh, once I get all of these in place, I'm going to fix them in with hot glue because that's pretty transparent. And here's the final product with all the lights glued in with hot glue. You can see it's pretty tight in there, pretty cramped, but it needs to be super small. And here you can see the power loader complete. I've drilled holes through the top and fished the wiring from the light all the way down through and it comes out the feet. Um, then through the grill I've drilled, uh, glued the power loader down, sorry. And then uh, I've put a JST connector on the back so I can just plug it in. My plan is when I put this in my collection of props and stuff, I can just hardwire it in and leave it powered rather than have batteries inside of it and have to fiddle with switches and stuff. The other thing I've done was use the Arduino random function and put some LEDs down under the grate to make it look like there's some sort of an electrical short or something down there. And that's it. If you've liked this video, please click like and subscribe and check back for more content. Thanks for watching.